Hello, everyone. My name is Chance, and you are currently listening to A Chance to Strive. All right, so basically, the one thing I wanted to kind of, like, let you guys know, um, on Instagram, you know how there's, like, the little channels things? I don't... If you don't follow a lot of influencers that actually do it, you might not know of it, but I'm pretty sure people know, like, that's a thing out there. Mine is called, like, self-discovery, and I randomly, like, I'll send them random deep questions. Um, At times, it's literally something to think about. At times, it's a quote, or at times, it's kind of like, I ask a question, but I kind of want to get an answer to see what people are thinking, and... Ah, let's go. It's all loading now. At first, it wasn't loading. But basically, I'm actually kind of going to go through it today, and we're just going to extract things from it that I felt like should also be shared with my podcast. Um, The title of the broadcast channel, it's actually called Self-Discovery. So it's a way, it's kind of like, I just want to influence people to think about stuff. Like I've said a lot of the times, the reason why I feel like I know so much is because I just randomly look for deep things to kind of just think about. For me, it's kind of like, a lot of people do overthink, but I feel like I think just as much as some of pe- some of those people that say they overthink. But I feel like the main difference, I don't know why I keep on doing this, but I feel like the main difference is kind of like, it's just the fact that I am in control of my thoughts. So I don't think I'm overthinking all the thoughts that I deal with. They benefit me and they actually help. So it's one of those things where I'm like, I know people can't necessarily control their thoughts. So I'm just going to give y'all random little gems to kind of think about. And we're literally just going to go through some of the recent ones. And then some I felt like were really genuine and things. If there are certain ones that I come across and I'm like, oh, we can talk about a little bit more of this that I didn't tell them. It's kind of like that type of vibe. And the whole idea of starting the self-discovery thing was I literally wanted to be an extension of my podcast. And I kind of just wanted to test it out before I was like fully tying it to my podcast. But yeah, so if you guys are listening and you want to be part of a community where it's like, the same me that you guys get on here where i'm trying to give you guys a message duh i think for me the beautiful part of it is you guys i always wanted to build a community that was for these things and the broadcast channel has like 1.8k members which i actually for somebody that has seven over 70k i promise you this is still beautiful to me because it's the way i get people to react and stuff once i get through you'll realize it's like bro it's, it's actually really fucking nice but the Instagram is chance underscore strive. And if you go in there, a lot of the times I think you can join from my not subscribe. OK, I don't want it. I don't want you guys to. <laughs> I think it's like five dollars to be a subscriber a month. I don't want you guys to do that. I don't utilize that. I, I don't want you guys as money. Literally, it's the broadcast channel. If you don't find a way to access it, literally DM me and I'll post a thing on my story that I'll be like, oh, join broadcast channel. Like I don't want to don't subscribe. It's a broadcast channel. Like I want that. To y'all know the difference. I'm not charging people for this. It's just, it's just something that I like. You feel me? Okay. Um. So basically, I'll go through some of the few things that we've gone through. So some of the ones are generally questions that I give, and then I think Friday, yeah, Friday was like 7:47 a.m. When I say this is like literally random, it does not be planned. Whatever is randomly going through my mind, I allow this broadcast channel to kind of just be an extension of that, where it's just like. You'll literally see it, right? So I kind of, I seen this thing that was kind of like in my mind and I'm like, hmm, I can splur up a little message to give y'all. And the thing I said in my broadcast, literally probably right before work or something like that, you're meant for so much more. Stop doubting yourself. It's okay that your dreams and aspirations feel so far away. If it didn't seem unachievable right now, then it wouldn't be the right goal or dream to chase. Dream big, even if it seems unrealistic right now. And the quote that kind of inspired that that I recently heard, it's one of those things where it's not like nothing new or anything extravagant, but it's still certain things where it's kind of like even the simplest things you hear in terms of quotes or just people saying things. At times, it just reminds you of something that, you know, you shouldn't have forgotten. And the, the quote was aim for the moon so that if you fall short, you'll be amongst the stars. The whole idea of that is if you have a dream that is so far ahead of you and you keep on trying to go for that, keep on trying to go for that. And you're you're like you're literally aspiring to get to that point and you're dedicating the work. You're persistent with it, not consistent, but persistent. Like even when it's not easy to have that consistency, you're like, nah, I have to make sure I stick to it. When you have a goal that's like that, even if you fall short of that goal, right, that's the whole reason. The goal is way up here. You can't even see my hand in the camera. That's all right. But if it's right, this is the sky. This is the very bottom. This is the stars. If you were only aiming for the stars and you failed, you might be here. 
might still be within other people's atmospheres. So that's like my whole entire point is kind of like, and then the last part of that message was, I love you all. Be great and never let go of your values while chasing your goals. That's also one thing. It's like, I felt like at times you have a goal that you want to get to, even though you've realized you're not the type of person that's supposed to achieve that. And for me, that's one thing that's very, that stood very true. It's like, especially with social media and why I've been saying I'm rebranding and everything like that. There are things you do because you're chasing a certain goal because it's, you're, it's the past version of you, right? It's not, you're not the same person anymore. Values have adjusted a little bit. Goals and aspirations have changed, but you already dedicated so much work. And it's one of those things. Yeah. The, the goal is very high and stuff like that, but it's, it's not what I really want. It's kind of like, and there was like a random song I listened to by J Cole. It's kind of like, the good news is you came a long way. The bad news is you went the wrong way. Yeah, so that, that uh, those two fit kind of perfectly. But it's kind of this idea. It's like just because you invested so much into something and you've made it so far, it doesn't mean it's meant for you or it doesn't mean you're supposed to continue. But at times it's like the thing about having all these journeys, right? If you're so stuck on the end goal, that's when it kind of fucks you up. For me, it's like there were certain things I was doing. I'm just like, wait, but I've I've invested so much. I got to get there. I got to get to that end goal. It's like, nah, bro, I'm I'm already 10 steps in. This probably only has 30 steps. But it's like the type of person that I want to be is only supposed to take. It's not supposed to take that route. But for me to I have to adjust. Right. I'm like, I have to realize it's like, OK, this is as far as I go, because the next few steps, the type of person that I want to be, he doesn't travel these paths. He doesn't continue on with this dream, with this goal that I'm aiming for. But it's not a waste. And I think that's the thing that gets stuck in a lot of our heads. It's like if I stop chasing this goal or this dream that I was chasing before, even if you realize it's not the one for you, but you're like, damn, I invested all of this for nothing. But for me, it's one of those things where it's kind of like there's nothing I've ever done in my life where I felt like it was for nothing, even if I didn't achieve it. And what's the reason for that? I've learned a lot. And me and my brother kind of had a conversation um, recently where it's kind of like the thing that really makes us stand out is the fact that a lot of fucked up shit can happen to you. A lot of bad things can happen to you. But if you constantly make it a thing that um, adds value to your development, you're never at a loss. Like if you go through something that's hella traumatic, but you learn from it, you become someone that can help people that go through the exact same traumatic experiences all right, if we take that trauma away, I don't have any of that. I can't teach someone to be better. I can't recognize when someone is going through it. See, there is so much value even when some fucked up shit happens to you. So my thing is, it's kind of like I have had to admit it. A lot of the things that have happened to me, I don't think I would want any of it to change. And I'm not talking about the things I've personally done. But in terms of like the things life has decided, I'm just going to let this happen a chance. <laughs> it's fucked up, but it's like. And I'll even get on a whole other level to make sure y'all understand just how much I truly believe this. My dad passed away when I was 13, 14, 14. I was 14 when my dad passed away. Next year, that's going to be 10 years ago. And this is one of the things where it's like, I, I, I don't like saying it because it just sounds fucked up. But it's not one of those things where I'm glad I went through it. Well, I, I'll be, this is the thing, I'll be very honest. Because of who I am and because of what that pain required for me to do in order to heal i am glad i experienced that not the fact that i'm glad my father passed away i hope you understand it's two different things that happened and i can't change it one way or another but i'm glad i had that experience because it made me it, it played a huge role into the person that i am today if my dad was still around i would have never had my mentor because i would have never i was never going to look for that hole that was missing and he kind of stepped in and, uh, and helped in so many ways where it's like, because I didn't have a father around, I didn't have that guidance. He also didn't. And this is what I'm saying about when you go through things at times, it may be traumatic and it may suck, but now you're someone capable of recognizing somebody else going through it. And now you can help my mentor. He also didn't have his father around. Not that his father passed away, but that's the thing. He just didn't have that around. So when it came to going through life and dealing without a father, that was something traumatic. He had to go through that. The idea that there was never somebody could look up to me like, dad, what's this? What's that? Like, I know how that feels. I know that shit sucks. But he went through that. So when he found out my father passed away, 
it was easy for him to recognize all of the things that I was dealing with. It made him a person that was capable of investing into me because he understood all he had to do to acquire himself, to kind of fulfill that void or to just make himself whole without that big part that could have made things 10 times easier. But because he went through that, he was the perfect person to help me. When he, he understood all of the little steps I was going to go through, all the little traumatic things that I was, that was going to make me have these realizations of, damn, I really want to father around. And it's like not having that guidance, it does affect you a lot. And, but I had someone that understood all these things. So he was able to step in and help. And that's the thing for me where I'm saying it's like, I'm not necessarily happy my father passed away. <laughs> How can I possibly say that? I, I wanted the guy to be around. I wanted that, but it didn't happen. So I'm at a point where I have to look back and realize the person you are, what do you credit it to? I don't credit it to a lot of the amazing things that happened to me. Those didn't really help me develop anything. Those made great memories that I can think back on for sure. But my dad not being around, it made me more. Um, how do I say this? It made me someone that I wanted to be more aware of things. And it made my emotional intelligence something that I prioritized heavily. Why? Because I always wanted to know whether my mom was in a good space or not. Why? She does not have a husband to be around to make sure that happens for her. So has her sons, and especially being the baby, I was like, no, nah, I need to always make sure if I know my mom is okay or not. Even if I didn't have that bond with her where I could easily just talk to her and make sure things are good. But the idea that I don't know how my mother is doing was something that never sat well with me. And I know that didn't sit well with me 10 times more because I know there weren't, there wasn't somebody else that had that as their responsibility. So I wanted to learn as much as I could to have that. Um, when it came to how much I recognized the faults when it comes to my siblings, why did I do that? They had these faults because they didn't have any guidance. There were things I know it's like when you have a father around, they can call you out on them. My mother, she does everything she could. She played both roles as well as she could. But there's something about a man's experience that my mom didn't have. Although she may understand it very well, there's certain ways you can speak life into somebody. And if you haven't gone through these things or if you don't understand them down to the T, you can't do it. So I knew when I saw these faults in them, I knew where it came from and where it stemmed from. But my big thing was, I know I probably won't be, I'll probably end up going through those same things. And if I do, I'm not going to have a father around to kind of like tell me, hey, you have to do this. You got to be aware of that. So in other words, I had to be able to, I had to get really good at reading all of my siblings. And it wasn't just about reading them. It was also the part where it's kind of like, I needed to understand what is it that they needed. So that way I don't end up having to deal with this. So my thing is kind of like traumatic experiences. If you heal, and this is my biggest thing where I'm constantly trying to learn, where I'm trying to discover things, like having these random epiphanies. And that's my thing too. The more I think, the more epiphanies I have. I'm, oh shit. And then when I have those oh shit moments, I'm just like, damn, now I have something extra that I can apply to my life. Something that can make me better. A lesson that I just learned. And the thing about learning all of these things and having all these epiphanies, you can pass them on. My mentor did them all for me and he helped as much as he could. We're at a stage where it's just like he's on the next phase of his life. He has to figure out more things and I have to figure out more things. And having too much guidance at times isn't necessarily help. He invested enough just for me to be able to go through life and learn all these little things. He kind of gave me the right tools and accessories and then I, and I go apply them. If you find something that you can't come across, that you can't overcome. I mean, if you come across something that you can't overcome. You have the right tools to learn what you need. You have the right tools to find the extra things. So for me, it's like not having a dad around, it helped and it benefited me in a lot of ways because I didn't let that stop me. Whatever doesn't work for me, I understand the fact that I got I to gotta put a lot more work in. And for me, it's like that's not a thing I'm necessarily upset with. It's just like it's life. And that's the beauty of it. It's like. A lot of the times, the traumatic things you go through, they become a guide on how you can get better. They become a guide on how you can help other people. So it's like, that was one of the biggest things that, one of the most traumatic traumatic things I went through and it 
haunted me for years and till today today i'll keep it, i'll be very honest there are times when i get emotional watching something on tv and it's like a cute father and son moment why because i didn't have that but i always try to learn from those moments why because one day i'm hoping to be a, an elite father like my dream for the longest i mean for the longest it wasn't to be a lawyer it wasn't to be an influencer actor none of that it was just to be a great father why because i didn't have that around and because i didn't have that around it became one of my dreams now i had to learn how do you become an elite father emotional intelligence has to be high you have to be high in discipline you have to and i'm like see that that traumatic thing i went through became such a guide for me on how to be better because that's something in my future because i've seen certain things in my future where it's just like i want to be that person that i didn't have around so how do i become that person for whatever kid to have in the future or kids to have in the future or how do i become that perfect man for my future wife so it's like it was one of the hardest things i dealt with but it was one of those things that guided me the most throughout life and showed me the little things that i was missing at times whenever i had that dream i'm like hmm yeah where you are right now and where you need to be the discrepancy learn how to fill it so another thing i gave you was like do you think it's possible to love someone that you can't trust and the whole thing is i tell people to react to answers where it's kind of like it depends i guess and then not at all so if somebody says it depends i guess they'd heart that and if they said not at all you can't they don't think it's possible to love someone you can't trust then they they just react to it so you can't talk back to it but whenever i need y'all to talk back i literally just say hey if you can't react to this or you want me to tell you something to you just dm me and then they'll dm me random questions and stuff like that and if somebody did question um send me a dm when it was like i think those two are the exact same i don't think it's possible to love someone like i don't i think you need to trust someone in order to love them so she was kind of saying it's like there's not a proper way for her to answer that question from that angle but that was my whole entire point it's like to see people's minds like where people's minds were at and then to have certain people reach out and be like uh i don't think this part makes sense because it is now it's like i'm getting a different perspective from them instead of just what the question kind of stated and this is my i'll tell you all the replies right so 79 people reacted to it depends i guess like it might be possible to love someone you don't trust and then 47 people reacted and they were like no not at all and my thing for that is i'll tell you where i stand so right i don't tell them i offer the questions i offer the random tips and quotes or whatever it is but i will never tell people what it is that i actually think and the whole reason for that is i tell you it's like i'm trying to inspire or i'm trying to like um evoke certain thoughts and certain thought processes within y'all so i'm not really trying to tell y'all hey chance thinks this no but chance has a question for you now go think about it now reply tell me what it is that you think so it's, that's the whole idea that i wanted and it's like when i come on here i give you guys my thoughts but when you go in here you are ex you're exploring thoughts that i can possibly have so it's a little better it's more like i'm guiding you to something but you have no idea what i actually believe for this and this is my thing i do think that with the exact same person that dm me on the side you're absolutely right i do not think that you can love without trust and this is my thing right i think it's i think you can have certain phases where love isn't there i think it's okay to fall back in love with someone but i think once the tr trust is out the picture so is love because i think one of the biggest parts of love is security and without trust how can you make somebody feel secure and i'll tell you this right i've i'm not one to kind of like shy away from things that i've done because if it can help you guys learn then i'm utilizing something that i did terribly for a good cause down the line so it's like you already did the act <laughs> now you can use it to do some good into the world i've the last person that i was with i did not treat them properly at all i got into a relationship with them and i knew that i should have kept on healing but at times it's just like we were both supposed to be healing but everything was so perfect for us and it's one of those things where we found so much comfort within each other and we are so great for each other that's one thing i'll say about this person right she's amazing and the dynamic we have is beautiful but there were so many things that were done as we were together where 
the trust wasn't there anymore. I cheated. Um, she didn't respect my privacy. And it was one of those things where, like, we wanted to stay with each other, but we kept on doing shit that made it hard to be with each other. And the love was kind of there, right? In terms of, like, wanting to love each other. I'm not saying this. The question isn't, like, you think it's possible to love someone. It's not like, oh, do you think the love is there? Do you think the care was there? All of those things were there. We cared deeply for each other. She is still in my life currently. We're taking the time to heal and everything like that before we try again. But it's like... It was impossible to love each other without the trust. It, it just wasn't. And I think that's the thing we realized. It's like no matter if we were willing to forgive one another, that it is, that it that, it would take time to work back up on that trust. And until we trusted each other again, I don't see how I could make her feel loved. Like, I, I do believe that I loved her even in that moment. But I think the whole part about love is it's, it's not a one-way street. It's not like, oh, I love you. So you must feel loved. No, I loved her. But without trust, that other person can't feel that because it's like, right, I just say I did that. And then I'm like, I fixed my shit. But how is she going to feel loved by me if she can't trust me? How is she going to love me? How is she going to feel loved by me if when we lay down next to each other, she's worried that I may grab my phone and text somebody else while she's sleeping? How can she love me if she's constantly thinking, when is the next time he's going to be up to some fuck shit? Without trust, the other person can't feel loved. I'm not saying you can't love someone without trust, but it's impossible for that person to feel loved without the trust being there. And I don't think love is one of those things where just because you feel it, it makes it evident and it makes it real. I think it has to be shared. And I think without trust, it's kind of like that agreement y'all are having. It's like that agreement you guys are having where it's kind of like, hey, we love each other. Trust is kind of like that thing that's in between that. It it takes that part away where it's like, oh, we're agreeing on this. We're on the same page on this. Without trust, y'all aren't on the same page. You, I may, She knows I, I care deeply for her, but she understood the fact that my past, because of my past, she can't trust that love. And the same thing for me. It's like because she was hurt, because she was dealing with these things, as much as I knew she loved me and she cared for me, she'd do a lot for me, at times it was hard to feel loved by her because of the faults and flaws that we were um, we were having each other be, deal with. And it was one of those things where it's like, I wholeheartedly believe you can love someone even if you don't trust them. But I think it's impossible for that person to feel loved without trust being in the equation. And then this is a simple one, but this was on August 7th, 10, 19 a.m., literally while I'm at work. Um, do you have a reason to smile today? 78 people reacted, of course. And of course, like the answers are just how I want to write, write them. I'd be like, of course. And I put this little emoji for people that are listening. I put the little cross fingers emoji, you know, some cute shit. And then for people and then for the no answer, it was like, eh. and then I put the kind of like you're disappointed hand to your face type of emoji. Um, so 78 people said, of course, I have a reason to smile today. And then 70 people said, eh. and the reason why I'm bringing this up, it's like. You always have a reason to smile. You always have a reason to be happy. And what is that reason? You. The thing is, you go through a lot of bullshit on your daily life. How do you not deserve an inch of happiness? And this is my thing. It's like you deserve to be happy in those moments where it's kind of like in those moments where everything is actually fucking up. And that's the thing for me. It's like um, a thing I'll just give you all really quickly before I continue with this. Um, if you are, if you want to get better with your thoughts or how to process things, voice memos on in your iPhones, I'm pretty sure Android's have them too. I, I started doing this where it's kind of like I have voice memos when I randomly just start talking about deep shit. I have a thought in my head. I don't want to let it go. And I'm just, and I just start recording it. Or if you journal journal, but a lot of people, I know the process of opening up a book, writing down, it's a little much, but do what we do in our daily lives. We 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 switch from app to app by just swiping you know, to the next one. Boom, boom, boom. We do shit like that all the time, right? So, what is what does it take from you if you're just randomly like, oh damn, I have this one thought, but then you're like, ah right, fuck it, I'm gonna put this on pause. I'm gonna go to my voice memos, press one button, it starts recording, and I talk. 
And when I tell you, at times I have voice memos in my phone that are like six minutes long. And I'll probably randomly find a way to incorporate some of them in a YouTube, ch- um, some of the YouTubes, but it, it works beautifully. But my thing is, it's kind of like, you will always have a reason to smile. And when you think you don't have a reason, you are that reason. Because it means nothing in your life is making you happy, but you always deserve to be happy or you should feel that way. So my thing is, it's kind of like when I'm going through a lot of bullshit, I have a lot of things that I call like my reset points. It's kind of like, or like my, the things I do to help reset myself to find a reason to smile. So like, I don't really feel like everything is fucking falling apart. It's like, for me, the gym is a big one. If I had a shitty day, I don't care if I had to work four days in a row and I was supposed to take a rest day. I am going to the gym. Why? Because it helps. It helps me smile when I I put I put myself through all of that bullshit and I look in the mirror. I'm like, yeah, this is nice. You know, you have to have those things where it's like the things that generally make you happy. If art is your thing, when you have a shitty day, don't just lay on the couch and then just be like, oh, my God, what the fuck? And then start processing everything that's going wrong. You already know this. So why spend more time more time to it? So it's one of those things where it's kind of like if you're very much into art, you had a shitty day get home and pick up a canvas or get home, find a blank piece of paper and start drawing or sketching something. Even if you don't, and this is my thing, right? A lot of people are like, oh no, but I'm not that happy. It's okay. Cause your brain understands this is something you love. So in the moment, even if your thoughts are clouding how you should really be looking at this activity or this thing right in front of you, there is a lot of benefit to just doing the things you love. Because are you going to do art and you're just going to start hating the things you love just because you did it once while you weren't the happiest? No, but at least your brain starts getting these things. It's like, wait, I'm having a shitty day, but I did something I love. Okay, so now you're, you know how I say default settings all the time on here? Your default setting when you're sad is you go on the couch, you lay down and you don't do nothing at all. Now you're tweaking that default setting. Your brain has to adjust to the fact that, hey, I'm having a shitty day, but I can still go paint. I can still go play golf. I can still go to the gym. And one thing I found is, right, when I when I first started the gym, and this is very much true, right, when I was having a shitty day, I, I took that as my rest day. I said, fuck it, I'm good. And then I started randomly saying, like, you know what? I don't like this process of I feel shitty and I don't want to do nothing. I lay in bed. I'm, I smoke. I do this. Like, I didn't like it. I didn't like this process. And what I realized is whenever I did have a shitty day, because I had that as a process, my brain always wanted to do these things that alluded to it. You know, you still it's not like you control every little thought that starts in your head, right? Sometimes they just pop in. Your subconscious is helping. It's throwing things your way, throwing things your way. The more I kept on, even when I didn't want to go to the gym, right? Just because I wanted this process to change, I'd randomly be like, damn, I'm having a shitty ass day. This is not good. I did bad on my exams. I don't think I did good in this midterm. And I'm stressed over jobs after college. Damn, I'm going to just go smoke this blunt and watch YouTube videos in my watch YouTube videos. That does nothing for me. So I was like, you know what? Anytime I feel really bad, I'm going to just go to the gym, even if I don't want to. And I know what you guys think is like, oh, you just want to kill yourself. It's not therapy. That is that. that. I've even brought this up. Um, therapy works, but it only works as much as you want it to work. And it's one of those studies was kind of like physical activity. And the gym is very much that works 1.5 times better than regular counseling. So to a lot of women that and I see these in comments all the time, go get out the gym, go, go find a therapist. Um, This works very well for them. Trust me. So my thing was, it's kind of like I just went to the gym whenever I was going through some shit. And then the more I did that, like it was one of those things where I had to force myself to the gym. Like I'm talking about, like, I don't want to work out. I drive to the parking lot and I'm saying, but at a certain point, once I already drive to the parking lot of the, uh, the gym, I'm here. I'm not going to go back home. I have to make something of it. Even if when I didn't want to, even if I spent 20 minutes in my car watching some shit smoking afterwards, because I'm already here, I'm going to go now. And if you look it down three months later, four months later, six months later, when I'm having a shitty day, my first thought is gym. It's not to smoke. It's not to go watch videos. It's not to go lay down. It's the gym would help because I've seen the fact that it helps. So it doesn't have to be the gym for you. It doesn't really have to be a physical activity. I'm just saying it's like whatever processes you have that don't benefit you. If you've made it a habit, try to break it. Just start doing other things. Whenever you have that thought, you're like, oh, I want to smoke now. Nah, if you just if you realize you're going through some shit, you want to take a little drink. Nah. 
change it, switch it for something else. And a lot of the times you think, oh, I'm going to just stop doing this and I'll be fine. No, you won't. Eventually you'll elude back to it because you have nothing else to replace it with. You can't just drop some shit and expect yourself to just be, oh, I'm straight. Replace that thing. And then it normally makes things a little easier to try to adjust to. But that was my whole entire thing. It's like I wanted, I always wanted to have a reason to be happy. And what, however long it take, however long it took to kind of get to that point, to create this new system, to drop this new habit, to, to hop into this new routine, I I stuck true to it, and I was consistent with it, and it started to work. So I'm saying it's like I don't know what your thing may be, but whatever bad processes you you have, it's easy to recognize them. Sometimes we just lie to ourselves because we don't want to see it, but you know exactly what processes you have that don't benefit you opted for something else and if you don't know do the research literally whatever thoughts you are stuck with type it on google i promise you there's somebody out there that has access to the right information that had that same thought and they decided let me put the answer out there anything i've ever had i was ever stuck on whether it was like some deep shit gym shit anything in life if i type in that question on google even if it's not the exact answer, I will get information that I didn't have that'll make it easier for me to overcome that. So my thing is just like take control over your own learning process and whatever doesn't work for you, find a way to make it work for you and have a system that actually benefits you. Oh, this was a random like sometimes I've seen this post and I screenshot it and I sent it to my um sent it to the thing. This was on August 2nd. I'm telling you, I'll be dropping gems. 837. <laughs> And I was like, listen to this shit. If y'all want deep shit, go on there. And it was like, you can't control nobody's actions. Loyalty comes from the heart. And then this is what I said in response to that post. The post said, you can't control nobody's actions. Loyalty comes from the heart. That is very much true. And this is my response to it in the post. A lot of people, sadly, internalize people's actions and think they're the reason for it. Some people are prone to believe everything's their fault if something goes wrong. And they're in their. Okay, let me let me break that down a little bit. Some people are prone to believe everything's their fault if something goes wrong and they're involved in the equation. So my thing is kind of like a lot of the times if you're in a family that made you feel like if you didn't do this, we're not going to give you this. A lot of the times it's kind of like you had to earn people's love or it's like you needed to deserve people being good to you. You don't. It's one of those things where I've actually been speaking, been speaking to this a lot. Right. When you're someone of virtue, you do these things one way or another. So in other words, when you're so with, when you're around someone who's consistent, it's not oh just because you didn't do this now they are going to choose to be someone else. No, when you're someone of virtue, you can be consistent. I don't do this because you do that. I do this because this is me. So it's one of those things where let's just look at something like cheating, right? Oh, you went like literally. I'll take my situation, right? You went through my computer. You did this. You did that. You were telling me I was doing things even while I wasn't doing it. So, of course, I started doing it. That, that, no, that, that's, that's not it. There are things that are triggers, and I completely understand that. But we're not talking about triggers. We're not talking about somebody made you more likely to do this or that. But even if we're talking about triggers, triggers make it more likely for you to slip if you're not someone who's consistent and true to who you are trying to be. But my thing was it's kind of like, when you're someone of virtue, you are consistent one way or another. Just because someone went through my computer, just because someone accused me of cheating when I wasn't, it doesn't mean I just go and do these things. Oh, well, well, you well, you, you were part of that process. You helped me do that. No, I'm someone who should not cheat. <laughs> and that's that. It's not one of those things where if I'm in a bad situation or if I'm with someone that I feel like doesn't deserve my loyalty, then I just opt into those things. And it's like, what type of person are you if... Other people are the reason you act certain ways. You're someone that's easily influenced. And and I was very much that type of person. And it sucks being that person because you're always going to question yourself like, is this who I really am? And at times it gets confusing because you, you blame it on other people, but you have access to enough to be that person. So nothing about your environment or the people that are around you should affect that. So my thing is, it's kind of like for a lot of people, if somebody isn't being the type of person that they told you they were going to be, I get it. You may have your faults, but you are not the reason for them being the way that they are. They are like they are in control of that. You don't force somebody's hand to do something. You don't push someone to start doing some shit like I get it. I you can trigger someone to do these things. 
But for me, triggers are kind of triggers only affect someone that have weaknesses. Being loyal, it was a weakness of mine. So when I had multiple triggers that kind of played into a situation, I felt I felt prey to that. I felt victim to my same faults. It had nothing to do with the person I was with. Because I could have been with someone that didn't do these things and I would have probably still done the same shit. I'm not saying one way or another I would have cheated, but I'm saying it's like that wasn't the only thing. It wasn't just them. It was about me and the fact that I wasn't a man that could be consistent with who he said he wanted to be. I want to be a man of virtue, somebody who doesn't cheat, somebody that doesn't do these things. I I can't say that and then hop in a situation with someone when it's like, oh, well, they, they made me do this. What? I like the idea of having control over myself and the idea that I did some shit or I stopped being true to who I wanted to be because of someone else. It, that doesn't sit well with me at all. Oh, yeah. And this is a random happiness thing. Right? I was like, be great and do something that makes you smile. By this point, you should realize your smile only matters to you. So take control of your happiness, please. Well, I feel like a lot of people, it's like, you really think just because you're around someone that cares for you, they're going to always make sure that you're happy. At times, people deal with way too much bullshit in their personal life to prioritize your happiness. So if you're not doing that for yourself, at times, no one is doing it. <laughs> and the worst part at times is kind of like when you're such a caring individual or at times you're someone who just doesn't love yourself, you prioritize everyone else's happiness and no one prioritizes you. So you're left being the only person whose happiness isn't a priority at all. And it does suck, and that shit is sad as fuck. So please, learn how to be happy and take control of your happiness. Should someone have to work for your trust before you give yours up? 99 people said yes. 41 people said, I don't think it should work that way. Y'all want to know what I believe? <laughs> the one I dedicated more words to <laughs> I don't think it works like that Like I get it We come from a day and age Where it's like It's so easy for people to do you wrong For you to deal with bullshit Stuff like that So we start to think It's like Well I'm not gonna give you my happiness Until you 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 prove that you really deserve it Um, You probably shouldn't engage With a certain person To have that conversation with them In the first place If you don't think they are the type of person That is worthy of your trust And this is the reason why I feel like a lot of people Hop into situations where they get hurt you start talking to somebody and you don't even know if you should trust them or not. There are certain things you should you should figure out before you dive in a relationship with somebody, before you start working in a bond with somebody. So it's not about relationships or it's just about people you come across in general. Like, and this is the thing, right? If you operate that way and they operate that way, how are both of you guys going to invest more than the other? Because you go is going to wait. Oh, no, no, I can't give you too much because I need you to trust me first. The other person's thinking it's the exact same shit. I can't give you too much because I need you to trust. But you're in a relate. But you're in a in a situation where you're now building a bond. You're now built working your way towards a relationship. Now we're talking, and it's like just get to know each other, <laughs> get to know each other's values, see if they align. All of this little extra shit that will make you understand if this is someone you should trust. And I'm not gonna sit here and say you should give multiple chances. I'm not you. I don't understand how you function. I don't understand the idea of giving multiple chances how it works for everyone and stuff like that. So it's like you do what you please with that part. But the idea that someone should work for your trust before you give yours up, it's ridiculous. Cause my thing is, it's kind of like offer some of your trust. You don't have to offer your whole entire hand and you feel me offer some, see how that person responds to it. If they match it, I bet we can keep doing this. This works if they don't. All right. So my trust doesn't change this. So clearly it's not needed. It's one of those things where you have to be willing to put yourself out there. You have to be willing to be hurt. And the thing is, the more you put yourself out there, the more you start trusting people, the more you're going to realize it really isn't about me or the trust that I give to certain people. Some people are just this way in general. So if you get, and this is the thing, right? At times we hold on to our trust so much. And when we finally give it to one person and they fuck it up, we're like, oh my God, no. But it's like, if you understood how that process worked and the fact that it had nothing to do with you, then it wouldn't affect you as much. You would you would be able to not you wouldn't have to internalize that shit every single time thinking that's the answer. It has to be me. It has to be the what I gave up. Oh, my God, people are shitty. I'm never going to give my trust up again. No. And this is the thing, right? You learn every single time something doesn't work if you choose to. So let's just say you went about it this way. You offered up your trust this way. You can be at fault for giving up your trust. But it's not just because your trust was offered up. 
it's probably because of the manner that you offered it. So now it's like you get to analyze all of that and you're like, I bet. Let me extract what I need to learn to be better for the next person that I trust. It's this idea that you have to constantly look at everything as an aid to your development. If you don't, that's why a lot of people go through situations where they're just so fucked over because it's like there's literally nothing you can get from this, but you offered so much. And I think that's the thing that sucks for a lot of people. And that's the reason why I'm saying make everything about your development. We will come across situations where you offered up a lot. And because it didn't go where you want, you're going to feel like, damn, I did all this shit for no reason. You did do it for a reason. But that reason is embedded in the lesson you're supposed to learn that you're ignoring. And at times it's like, stop having to, stop needing to blame that person. It's like, all right, they waste, they took enough of your time already. Let it go. Now stick with the, with the situation and decisions you made. Not theirs, but you. Because you're working on a better you, not a person that's better at dealing with the bullshit from this exact person. No, everybody's different. A lot of motherfuckers have hidden agendas and they're way too good at it for a kind, caring person to see through it sometimes. Because you're always going to give benefit of doubt. And this is exactly, exactly what I mean. At times you can literally sit back and you're like, hmm, I gave this person benefit of the doubt. And that's not a bad thing per se. I don't want to stop doing that. I don't want to stop being that type of person. But I realize someone has to earn that in terms of what they show me. So it's not like, oh, you need to earn my trust and before I offer it to you. But it's like, I can trust you to a certain extent. But before I can give reasons to little faults you have or little act little things you've done, I need to see enough about your values. Can you be a consistent person or can you be someone that's all about love, this and that, and then do something completely opposite of that? Is that a fluke or is that just who you are? You have the capacity for this, but you also have the capacity for that. At times when you look at those things and you can break it down. And I think that's the thing with a lot of people. It's like we don't know how to heal. We don't know how to process shit. And we real when we sit here and we think, ah, oh, I'm just I'm just this way. And that's what it is. No, bro. Like the answers are out there. Just search it up. How do I heal? How do I process um, past situations? You can literally look all these things up and you'll find so much. At times, this is my thing. Like you will find step by step things to do to help. But a lot of us don't want to. I We like the victimized mindset because it makes us feel safe. It makes us feel like, oh, the other person did all the wrong. No, somebody could have fucked you over. And there are so many things you did wrong. You're not to blame for what you went through. But even when you're in a situation, somebody did so much shit to you. There is still so much value that you can extract from that to better yourself. And I think that's the part that's even better. It's like, do you really want to hop in a situation where it's like, or do you really want to get out of a situation where you're like, oh my God, I did so much and I got nothing out of it? Or do you want to be in control and say, I know that this didn't benefit me in terms of where I wanted it to go, but I'm going to make this work for me and I'm going to find a way to make it make me a better person. Go through a lot of shit, but <laughs> I come out a better person out of it all. So I never sit there and I stress over it for too long because it's like I have an answer to what the fuck I went through. So I'm chilling to go on to the next thing. I don't have to get stuck in the past. And most of the times you get stuck on something because you don't know all the information you need. And at times you don't need all that information. You just need the part that works for you. This is like advice for the gym. If you guys are caring about that, um, I, I kind of like posted a picture of a random video of me and like my progress and everything like that. I was like bird chest departing because the bird chest is starting to go away, you know, because your boy's starting to get the milkers a little bit. Um, but I was like, you're signing work on your health. Don't go. Don't go to the gym. Don't. Oh, I was like, don't got to be the gym, even dieting or picking up a new outdoor habit. If you got free time to sit in the house, please do something to make yourself proud. Um, once you're two years down the line and got nothing to show for it, you will feel like shit and feel like you haven't done much. And sadly, the truth is you haven't. <laughs> so it's not like you're lying to yourself. You should be learning outside of school and outside of work. The idea of learning is something I'm getting better at and investing in myself. By the way, I'm slightly drunk, so I'm pretty good at this. But I was like, by the way, I'm drunk, but I'm pretty good at this. And this is what I really mean. Like, I, I am doing this no matter what state I am in. I could be in the morning. It could be the very morning when I just woke up. I could be drunk. I could be, um, this is the thing, even when, when I'm drunk, you know, I still know how to say things properly. I'm not going to lie to you. 
the typos, <laughs> they were very much in there. So some things are said out of con, not like out of context, but like out of order. But you know the the caring part of me still showed through that. But I was like, the more I learn, the better I become. And it's one of those things where it's kind of like, oh, keep learning. Like, it, it works. There's not a thing I learn where it's just like, oh, no. I mean, at times you learn something that's bad. But if you have so much perspectives, I know what to not do. And it's like, that does help. Knowing the right thing to do and knowing the different perspective that go into that. But they tell you what to not, what you shouldn't tap into. Or the thing, like, it's like, eh, you know you shouldn't do this. But it's like, oh, but it could be different in this situation. It could be different in this situation. At times, it's like, that's yeah, the thing. It's like, at times you do learn some things where it's like, it's not beneficial to you. But being someone who's smart enough, who has learned enough, you know how to make that process still beneficial, I should say, for when you see it out into the world or when you see it against somebody else or when you come across it or some shit. Oh, the better I become as a person, the more reasons I have to be confident. So the more you know, it is attached to your confidence. Because this is the thing, right? I would not be confident to walk up in here if I didn't know anything at all. And in moments where I feel like I don't have anything new that I learned, I don't come in here at all sometimes because it's like, how can I come here and exert this confidence? And I'm like, oh, I'm about to give y'all bullshit, but it's all right. I'm going to be confident. See, that's a narcissist. I, I don't want to be. I don't want to be that. The things I give y'all are things that I actually sit with for a little bit. And then I learn different perspectives. And then I'm like, ah, bet this works. You know, I can I can give them this little bit of knowledge. You know, I can I can help them soak this knowledge up real quick. But. Yeah, it's like if I don't have anything beneficial to offer to you guys, it's hard for my confidence to be genuine. And that's the thing you have to realize. A lot of people fake it. Absolutely. And they're great at it. And this is the thing you have to understand about narcissists. Um, they're not somebody that just puts up an act and they just want to operate in that and they don't understand much more. People that are narcissists, they tend to be very high in emotional intelligence. Like they understand emotions very, very fucking well. And that's the reason why they can play on these things. But I, if I need to take a break to acquire things before I offer it to you guys, then I'm going to do that. And I think that's the thing I can give advice to people. It's like the fake it until you make it, it very much, it, it's beneficial in a lot of ways. But at times when you don't know, it helps to just take a step back and go figure it out. Instead of constantly trying to be that person that knows it all, that has, has access to all of this shit. It's like, bro, if you know how to learn, then why are you faking something? Whatever you don't have, just go out there and find it. This is another. This is probably the last one, right? And this is one of those things where it's kind of like I'm probably not even gonna actually really go too deep into it. This is one of those things where I'm gonna use my podcast to do the same thing my channel does. So it's like y'all are gonna think about this whenever you're listening to it. Okay, right? React to what's worse to my podcast. Think about which one would be worse to you guys. Someone incapable of accepting feedback slash taking criticism, or Someone who creates lies to fit an image that they aren't. Which one is actually worse, you guys? I'm going to say it one more time just so you have access to that, right? Which one is worse? Someone incapable of accepting feedback slash taking criticism or someone who creates lies to fit an image that they aren't. And for me, I'm not going to lie. This is I asked this because generally it was a hard choice. I did not know which one was worse for me. But if I'm like literally... I had this thought. I didn't fully, fully process it. I just gave it to y'all, right? But if I have to really think about it, I hate people who can't take feedback because then you're stuck to your ways. At times, if it's certain individuals, I'll just be like, yo, you're delusional as fuck. Like, there is no way you sit here and you think you're perfect and there is nothing that somebody can tell you that to make you better. Like, I hate motherfuckers that really do not think they can do any wrong. And there are so many people like that. And you see them on social media all the time. And that's the thing with social media. It's became like this. There's so many eco chambers on social media where it's just like somebody could be delusional about some shit, but they will find so many other delusional motherfuckers across the world to justify it. And they'll be like, if other people think this, I'm fine. And that's why I unfollowed certain pages because I realized it's like certain people follow certain pages just to have their thoughts kind of like justified even if it's wrong but they know this page normally posts things like this and that so it's normally going to fit them and they're like fuck it i must follow this page because it posts all the shit that i believe and you have and you have no care whether this page posts the right shit or not but if it's something you agree with 
Fuck it. That's what we use social media for. It's not to learn. At times, it's literally just to regurgitate the same shit we believe. Oh, my God. That's what I was saying. But if you go and search that same shit up, there's so many, so much information about why it's wrong. But you're not going to do that. You have the easy validation while you're scrolling. That's a little easier for people if you want that. And people who create laws to fit an image that they aren't, I'm going to give it a ban with you. Um, and I was talking to somebody about this, right? Or I've at least experienced this a lot Where it's just like You see somebody lying out their ass For no fucking reason It's like You could've just shut the fuck up <laughs> Like you literally did not have to say shit At times You don't even get asked the questions But You're gonna sit here and bullshit people Just because you truly need that validation You truly need to maintain this persona Even though you know you aren't and all I'm going to tell you, if you are that type of person that just randomly lies for the purpose of tricking people around you into believing something, you're still not that person. As much as you can make other people around you believe it, I know for a fact what happens when you sit at home with yourself. You don't believe it. You don't. It's, it's like, it's one of those things, even if you're a narcissist, at times narcissists can believe certain things, but they only invest so much energy into tricking people because they can't trick themselves with that. Because if they could easily trick themselves that I really am this person, then you could be that person. But a lot of the times, it's like the justification you get from other people, it helps you ignore that flaw. Or it helps you ignore that part of yourself that you just can't accept. So you want to surround yourself with constant bullshit, lies that allow you to tap into a reality that you know that you aren't. A reality that you don't know how to get there by yourself. Because the thing, right? If somebody feels the need to lie... For certain reasons, to or to be something, to be to look like you're this type of person, or like I'll for for instance, right? Like the person, somebody I was talking to is like, there's this girl in their friend group that will randomly bullshit them about experiences she has with guys, and they some of them just know it's it's just bullshit, and it's it's to the point where it's kind of like there's secondhand embarrassment <laughs> when it happens because people around us is like. Come on, shawty. Like, why are you doing this? What the fuck? We know this didn't happen. We know this isn't you. But they want to fit that image so badly. And it's just like, why don't you just learn what it takes to be that type of person? And then you get validated for being you. But a lot of us don't want to put in that work. A lot of us don't want to learn. When I say the biggest thing you can do is learn how to teach yourself shit, and my professor told, I said, my professor, my teacher told me this in like 11th grade, 10th grade. He wasn't lying. I come across so many people with dilemmas <laughs> that last them years, months, weeks, hours. And I can give them an answer within a few seconds. And it's not because I know a lot of shit. I do know a little bit. I, ain't gonna, I know a decent amount. I ain't gonna lie. But. My thing is, it's kind of like, it's the fact that when they bring me these things, I can easily search them up. Like, at times, I have people text me bullshit they go through. I just randomly search up what they texted me. All the answers are there. And it's like, we're really so complacent with the lack of knowledge we have. And it is sickening because some of these people, they be a lot older than me, you know? And you still haven't got to the point where you understand how to learn. How to be better. And I'm not going to lie to that part to me. It's kind of sick. But that is it for today. Um, I always try to leave y'all off with something in terms of like, try to sum up the message. I just, ah, but I'm done. Um, what, what, what would I do for today? Honestly, I think the one thing I would kind of leave you guys off for today in terms of like recycling everything I've kind of said already is like, some of these lessons all the time, I'm going to re-emphasize certain shit and will be said often. But the reason why I always say these things often is kind of like I come across it and I realize just how much of an issue with it. And I know hearing certain things once, it doesn't make people change. If it did, then your parents, <laughs> literally your parents or anybody older in your family, they would not waste their breath telling you the same shit over and over again. And I had to realize why my mom would tell me things over and over again. It's at times it's just the fact that I didn't truly understand the importance of it. And this is the thing with young me, I could be like, what the fuck? I, you said this so many times or you don't think I know. It's like, yeah, you may know it. But unless you've actually applied yourself to actually change this part or to really learn what they've been saying to you, it's still going to concern them because they know how crucial this is. 
So I'm doing the same thing. I will reemphasize certain things and I will say certain things over and over again. Not like how I break things down, but just like certain lines, like certain themes that I really think are important. Because as much as you hear it from me, it really doesn't do much until you learn to how to apply it to yourself, how to apply it to your life. And this is the thing about someone who has access to a lot of knowledge, right? Everyone who has access to you, it becomes a privilege for them because you are one of few. Like, bro, my friends come around me and at times conversations we have feel like a therapy session. You don't think it's a privilege to have access to that? How often can you just, and this is the thing, right? It's not a therapy session because it's like, I just regurgitate bullshit to them. No, I can break down what they're going through. I can help them find those thoughts that they were ignoring. I can tell them a plan that would possibly work for the next thing that they're dealing with. And it's one of those things where it's just like, it's like this feels great. I've been thinking about this for years and it's like, or I've, I've been really struggling with this and it's just like, this really lifted like a lot of weight off my shoulders. I love the fact that I can do that for people. I love the fact that I can do that for some of my friends. And I know the fact that they love the idea that they know someone that can help with that. Become that person. Everybody wants to be loved and appreciated, but it's like, just learn that type of the type of person that is loved and appreciated. Learn what that person looks like and then become that. So that love can be genuine and you don't have to question it at times. And this is the best part about it. Even when people don't respond to the right way, it's okay. Right? It's like if you're handing people your last dollar and they that rep and they was like if you're handing people the last of you have of something and they don't accept it or that transaction is a terrible experience for you, it will hurt. But if you have an abundance of it, let's just say you have a million dollars in your account. Actually, no, let's just say you have you have a lot of gold. This is probably a better analogy, right? You have a lot of gold and you're trying to hand it to people and they're saying no. I'm trying to give you gold. It's, a, it's something of value. And they say no. Are you going to be hurt? No. Because the thing is, it's like when you have a lot of something that is great, when people don't tap into it, you're not butt hurt because you're just like, it's your loss. Because I know this is something of value. If you can't see it, it is what it is. <laughs> that analogy, it was a little shaky, but I promise you, I know y'all. And I know y'all smart enough to still get what the fuck I meant by it. But it's this idea where it's like, when you don't have much to give and you're giving your last bits and pieces, you need that transaction to be so great at times to really mean anything for you. And you need that, you know, because it's like you're doing this for a reason. People who give their last bits, they do it because they want to be so helpful. And when you don't have the opportunity to be so helpful, you're like, hmm, damn, I was really hoping I could do that because that mattered to you more than you having anything. Clearly, or else you wouldn't have done it. But now when it's like, you, you're somebody that's rich and you offer money to somebody, they say no. Oh, okay. That's fine. Like, you know it's something of value. So you don't stress over the fact that people accept it. Even if somebody doesn't internalize it the same way as you, you know this is a value. So when you become someone that learns a lot and you know so much, or when you're someone that's capable of loving to on a level that nobody else can love, when you try to offer that love to somebody and they don't accept it, you don't internalize it and be like, it's, it must be my fault. No, you know you offered them something of value. And if they couldn't see that, it's not your fault. And at times, that's what I'm trying to say. It's like the more you learn, the more you start to understand about things, the more you can understand how amazing you are. And if people don't respond to you properly, you don't stress over it or you don't start thinking, oh, what I'm giving is probably not that great. No, it is. If they can't see it, somebody else will. And even if you're not looking for that somebody else, you're aware of where you stand instead of just having to have all these terrible th thoughts just because someone didn't accept you properly or didn't accept what you had to give properly. Yeah, you don't need people to come. You don't need any convincing of that value. So please, please learn how to learn <laughs> and learn how to invest into yourself and just... Stop being so complacent with not knowing shit. Anytime I see somebody break down something that I don't understand, I want to do research on it because I don't like the idea that somebody out there knows more than me. And maybe this is the part where I'm just competitive as fuck. 
but I have an ego that I normally like to work for. If I go into gym, somebody looks better than me. I'm proud of that person for getting to that point. But there's no reason why I can't get to that point if you got to that point. And that mindset, <laughs> it's golden. Somebody did it, I can do it. If you could break this down, I could break it down. Just start doing shit like that. It's like there are people that have these mindsets and they have it to hate on people. And if you have that mindset to make yourself better while you're still appreciating the work that somebody had to put in for something, fuck it. But yeah. And so I'm going to leave y'all off and I'm going to say thank you. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you for listening to A Chance to Strive. And this is me signing out. Yeah.